There's no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. <laughs> Side stories? That's when the cannibalism started. Side stories. Yeah. Hmm. Man, I had one of those dreams last night that I destroyed my favorite pair of sunglasses. You ever have one of those dreams where you destroy something? Yeah. Where something fucked up really bad happens and you, like, I was so thankful when I woke up and I was, like, knew then I was dreaming. Oh, yeah. Because then you got your sunglasses back and it's like nothing happened. But it's more that I was upset about my actions that led to the sunglasses being destroyed. But I don't remember what it was I was doing. I just remember being on my knees in an asphalt parking lot just going, no, no. <laughs> and I was just looking at my broken sunglasses. And I don't think I was crying about the sunglasses. As much as how much of an idiot you are. I'm a fucking, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm a moron. I don't know. Have you ever had that? Well, you have a lot of violent dreams. I have violent dreams. I also get the dream a lot where like, it's like we're about to go do a sketch show and then, mm. you know, I'm walking on stage and you're like, no, we're doing this sketch. You don't know your lines? Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, It's yeah, always yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the And then day. I had like this other uh, dream that we were doing a show for a bunch of orphans and they were like in the mezzanine <laughs> and they, they were like jumping from mezzanine to mezzanine. Like they were just so restless and we're trying to perform and stuff. And then like one of the kids fell and died. And then all the other kids started to jump off the mezzanine and kill themselves during our show. Welcome to Side Stories. Hey, I'm Henry Zabrowski. I'm sitting here with Ed Larson. He's got great dreams. I love the idea. I don't know why. Mass suicide by a bunch of orphans in the middle of a show is kind of romantic. Yeah, I It feels so. like it's a My Chemical it's a Romance yeah. like music video, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? I feel like it's the kind of thing that happens in Bali. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, once they're done dancing. Once the music stops, the orphans get sad again. So, this week on Side Stories, fun updates. Lots of lots of stuff going lots on. Lots of stuff going on. A lot of show to get to. Uh, number one, you remember how, what I love, uh, one of my favorite things about Side Stories, which now you've seen, and, mm -hmm. and I still love it. It never gets old. When we spend about 10, 15 minutes talking about a thing or a subject. And it's all wrong. And then the next day, like, provenly, immediately debunked, yeah. torn apart. One of my favorites. We're only as good as the news we get. And guess what? The news ain't good, friends. The news ain't good. But Angie Harmon, uh, number one, is a Republican. I was wrong about that. Did not know. That's fine. Whatever. Who cares? So Angie Harmon, we covered last week. Her dog, Oliver, was shot by inst by an Instacart driver. She named her dog after an orphan. I, I guess. And the then most she, famous orphan. Yeah, the most famous orphan of all. A hungry child. Yeah. Always name your dog after a hungry child. <laughs> and Can I have some more on. Instacart driver? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. And then he was just like, no, this is fucking socialism, dude. And he shot him in that. No, that's that's unfair to socialism. That's unfair yeah. to socialism. But the, apparently uh, all that was wrong. Because they said that the Instacart driver had uh, shot the dog without any provocation. That the dog did not rush the Instacart driver. There was no indication, apparently, originally, according to Angie Harmon, that the dog was, um, she said originally the dog didn't do anything to the driver. Now it's kind of coming out. There's a police report that immediately came out, said that the dog did attack the Instacart driver lightly. I mean, I'm, I still think shooting it is overkill. It's half beagle. But, you know, yeah, it is a it, family dog. Yeah, no, it, it, yes. I mean, yes. You don't have to shoot Just it bad. Angie Harmon sucks. Doesn't Does mean, mean her kids needed to get their dog murdered in front of them. Honestly, it might teach the kids a lesson. <laughs> it might help them. I mean, it will probably create several Eric Trumps. But in the meanwhile, but like. They're all going to start hunting dogs. They're going to start hunting dogs. <laughs> And like, oh, I didn't know how fun this could be. <laughs> Thanks, mommy. And she's like, I'm in Rizzolian Isles. I don't know. I feel like I still lie on the same way I felt even with the new information. Yes. I still think that this Instacart driver's a bitch. I just don't think you you need to shoot the dog. You don't need we to, know. You we don't know. need to shoot the dog. Just, I don't care how, if I get bit by a St. Bernard, I will let it live. Well, I'll punch it and then run away. Uh, well, St. Bernard, so I might kill you. Go just move past the dog death. 
There's a whole bunch of cops murdering dogs. We know. We learned they're spending a lot of money. They're spending a lot of money on these murder dogs. Yeah, there's a lot of cops. <laughs> we, I dogs. promise you, we wouldn't talk about it. But it's, it's, it's a bummer. A lot of, it's a lot. It's a bummer. Hundreds it, of dogs a year. Yeah, it's a bummer because they're considered property. No one seems to give a fuck. It's a lot of bad information. No one likes it. Yeah, it's really, really bad. The it's it is really, really sad because dogs are considered property, but they're not. They're little children. And Amen. They have souls and they they dream. Yeah, and they dream about us. And you know what was interesting about what I read about the expose on the cops shooting the dogs is that oh, in the past 70 years, not one cop has ever been killed by a dog. But cops have killed multiple people while trying to shoot dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Including bad. other cops. Yeah, this is bad. No, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> it's hard to make humor from it. Yeah, but it's, it's not a, funny. It's just insane. Do you know the name of the blog or whatever it was? The 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 so people could read it at home. Yeah. Uh, if you if you want to read about this. get really fucking you want to get really really upset. Oh yeah, it's on criminallegalnews dot criminallegalnews dot org. Yeah, the DOJ police shooting family dogs has become an epidemic. Cool. And written by don't help. Dale Chappelle. Whoa, weird, yeah. interesting. <laughs> uh, I wonder if there's any relation. So that's that update. Uh, again, everything we say is, mo- is wrong. The next day, uh, you know what's not wrong is having Holden McNeely on side stories. Yes, oh, my we God. have tallied truly some of the. We got a lot of responses yeah. about Holden McNeely. Guest starring on last week's episode. And I'm going to say... Some real polling was done. Real polling. And I'm going to say he pulled a squeaker. We're looking at a 53% approval rating for Holden McNeely on side stories, which means he's coming back. Yes! We're going to come back. That's a Biden W, guys. Suck it, you fuck. Sorry. That's what we're looking for in November, dude. That's as good as it's going to get. All right? Lesser of two evils. Yeah, he, he so he did win that. Um, the vitriol <laughs> coming forth though that is anti Holden McNeely. It's wild. It is. Qu- it I is am very. Gonna, we hear you. I'm gonna put we, it in the unreasonable <laughs> category. But for those of you that just listen to it, you know they, they get it. It's like again, whatever keeps his family safe. And if him getting it out of his system, yeah, on the show does it. And we've already done our job for society, haven't we, Ed? That's right. That's right. That's right. Hail his daughter. Hail his daughter. This is for his daughter. That's why we have him on the show. Mm-hmm. Remember that next time. The man who talked about a minute and a half rapping about how he wants to cut his own dick off. He's a father and he's a husband. Yeah. And so, so think about his family. Think about his family. He doesn't. But you can. <laughs> uh, so that's another thing. He, so I guess he's going to come back at some point. Holden McNeely is Back on the menu. Uh, <laughs> all right, we got a couple of other updates. A lot of show here. A lot of fucking yeah, show. Yeah, a lot of things going on. Um, uh, another update is Ethan Crumbly's parents in an absolutely astounding move. This is a this is a once in a life. This this might set precedent. This from might now change on. everything. James and Jennifer Crumbly, the parents of middle school shooter. The Michigan school shooter Ethan Crumbly have been sentenced to 10 to 15 years in prison for manslaughter for essentially aiding and abetting their son in his school shooting. So they they got guns for him. We covered a little bit about the trial. Watch some of this trial footage. It's extremely heartbreaking. Jennifer Crumbly was too busy getting her fucking getting trains ran on her in various parking lots to care for her son's fucking uh, mental issues. Mm -hmm. He was desperately crying for help. And they instead they bought him a shotgun. Yeah. Which, as far as I know, doesn't always make you happy. Like, but at the same time, I, you know, buying a shotgun, let's save it for innocent people. Yeah, they wanted to they wanted to uh, give them twenty eight months, but they it, uh, but they ended up getting fifteen years. Yes, as they should. I'm glad they got the book thrown at them. Uh, Jennifer Crumbly is saying, "I will be in my own internal prison for the rest of my life." Before I address this court directly, I want to do something that I have never been able to do. I want to say. I can't imagine the pain and agony for the families. I physically cannot imagine things. I have no mind's eye. That's not true. She didn't say that. They have lost their children and what they're experiencing and what they're going through. She doesn't add. She doesn't end that thought. She doesn't end that thought at all. I wonder if the father will end up in prison with the son. There are, oh, they, ooh, actually, I don't know. I feel like the father is going to be put in isolation as well. They're both in isolation. Ethan Crumbly's for certain in isolation. Yeah. But yeah. why would they be isolated from each other? Well, they will definitely split up. I actually think that they... 
Side stories LPOTL at gmail.com. I I don't know. I wonder because I feel like the Menendez brothers are separated. Yeah. They do separate. They do tend to separate people that they would view as being bad influences on each other. Like yeah. the idea that Ethan Crumbly and her his father would sort of talk about, you know, I don't know how that works. If I, I was think, the father, I would beat the living shit out of him if I saw him in prison. Of course, but even Crumbly, I think, is an indifferent set altogether because he's there for felony first degree murder yeah. where they're going in for manslaughter. So I don't know if they'll go in the same prison system. I don't think it works like that. I think that they might go to a smaller, less security, more like, more like a medium security prison versus a maximum security prison. Is manslaughter a violent crime? It's an accident, it's right? It's not cuddling. Yeah, you know I, know, I mean, I it's know, not but, a professional like, but masseuse. it's not murder. It's not homicide. It's manslaughter. But you know, it's got a cooler name. It does have a cooler name. So I don't know. I actually don't know. Okay. That's a very good question. All right. Well, we'll I think out. a manslaughter is is a violent crime, but largely it's about the intent. Yeah. Yes, manslaughter is a violent crime, according to FBI's Uniform Crime Reporting, UCER program, which defines violent crimes as those that involve force or the threat of force. Sure, done. Done. Don't need you. Side stories, lpotl at gmail.com. Yeah. Email me about other things, like, do you have poop stuck inside of your butthole? Yeah. Now, <laughs> what we have- uh, One thing I will say about the crumblies is they look like they don't leave too many crumblies behind. <laughs> <laughs> They're fat. Well, she's just more unpleasant looking. <laughs> Say what you will about Jennifer Crumbly. She was getting that butthole fucking team, dude. Yeah. She was getting out there. I guess that James fucking... is really tiny. James is tiny. James wasn't giving Jennifer what she back. wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd he wasn't pleasing her. He wasn't pleasing her. That's why she had to go out there and she had to fuck whatever she could fuck. She was doing it in parking lots and hotels. And that woman is an unpleasant woman. But she might be, who knows? She might kiss like a champion. I don't think so. She's you don't got think no Jennifer lips. Crumbly doesn't kiss good? She has no lips. Yeah, but you, sometimes a thin lip woman makes up extra for chin action. <laughs> and slaps that tongue in and out of it. Man, I love sucking me some chin. I like a flat ass chin, brother. <laughs> um, another update. So we have another update. A lot mm -hmm. of stuff today. We got some great information on Greg Locke. Some of it that I wonder whether or not we will, we should even say. Like, I did get a message. I'm just going to say it. Just say it. I mean, we don't we know got, if this is true. Of course not. But we did get a message about this. Craig Locke's meth dealer and the person who met his meth dealer and how Craig Locke would continue to proselytize at his meth dealer, which is honestly, that's a good way to go. Because if you can, as a preacher, if you can and mobilize, someone. if you can mobilize the meth community to do your preaching for you, you're going to get quadruple the preaching. Yeah. And uh, fuck it, that's a discount amount of gums flapping because that's that's street team that is the street team literally it's a literal street team and then you could talk to other meth heads and convince them do i feel like it's easier to commit convince a meth head that jesus is real than somebody who's just sober i mean sure why not I they mean, want out right i mean if you're a priest and you're giving people meth that's gonna make them believe in god Cool. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's fucking dope. Right, Smoke, man? Smoking teeth for Christ. Fucking dude, that's what you got to do, friend. <laughs> um, but Greg Locke, just for those of you, a little reminder. Last week, we covered how Greg Locke is a preacher for Global Vision Online Community. That was one of, that's the Global Vision Church is the name of his church. Yeah. There's the, I was looking at the online community Facebook because he got a great quote from one of his followers. He runs this little shit ass fucking mega church in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there they found an, a trailer of Bibles that was burnt on his property. And we at last podcast on the left are pretty fucking certain he was the one who burnt the Bibles in yeah. order to talk about the various fat communist pigs that were burning Bibles on his property. We also know that that's probably horseshit because I got, got great messages talking about, oh, you mean the field that's surrounded by Greg Locke's personal security team? That's where they found? Yeah. And it, was a, and it was a trailer, like a, a, a big giant trailer, yeah, trailer. Hitch, which, is, which ain't cheap. And then you 200 Bibles. It. It's a big prank. You could have done the same prank with 10 Bibles. Oh, you could have done you don't one. You need 200. But you just need one. 200 Bibles is like, who are we doing this for? God yeah. doesn't care. No, exactly. God didn't write it. Atheists would not do this. No, atheists get laid. Yeah. Atheists have things to do. Well, not atheists. Atheists are also annoying. I find anybody who's any pure of anything yeah. slightly annoying. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm an atheist, have but I don't even really believe in that. I don't even believe in atheism. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't really just believe in anything besides Portos in the valley. Amen. I mean, that is, and Satan, the power of Satan, but it would also, the power of Satan would be expressed through the power of baked goods. Yeah. Would it not be? Yeah, um, I guess I'm more agnostic. I'm fully agnostic. I'm agnostic about all things. Yeah. I'll give you some- But you're Robert a Satanist. Yes, but Satanist is way more of, I view that as a societal position. Yeah. Like, I'm a person that, like, because we don't believe, Satanists don't believe in a deified Satan. We believe in the symbolism behind the hypocrisy of the church. And also, it's fun to say you're a Satanist because it yeah. still does continue to get people mad in the country, which is all we want. Yeah. Because we're contrarians by nature. Sometimes don't, not pleasant. Yeah. And free Bible lessons I saw on the street today. Oh, yeah, way. I saw I those saw, guys. Yeah, yeah. Free oh, yeah. Bible lessons. Oh, yeah, and she's like, oh, great. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to say I'm a Satanist to them, but then I chickened out. I need to get more nah. Zabrowski balls. Nah, you don't want to eat. And my thing, too, is that it depends on how you're tra you're channeling them. If, they if, if you come you, to me, I say, I'm in league with Satan. I literally just Do say you? those words. Yes. I'm in league with yes. Satan? What does that mean exactly? To them, it sounds more frightening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in league with Satan. You know what I mean? But it's also... I always say, barking up the wrong tree, brother. Yeah, hell yeah. That's a, yeah, that's Woo, a, yeah. <laughs> but I always listen to Stephen Colbert's advice about character acting. Wear your character as light as a cap. Yeah, but he's also a god freak. Yeah, he's just he's a strange. He's got a lot of stuff going on there. I yeah. don't want to. I don't want to know his inner inner life. So we have some. That was not only the the only updates we have about Greg Locke. So yeah. I got a good message. This is just an example of just some of the people that love Greg Locke. This was a post online on the Global Vision online community, the Facebook group for his church. I recently found out I had a demon in my womb put there by witches to attack my ministry, having babies and raising them as godly warriors. Every time I got pregnant or after I had a baby, Satan would try to kill me or cause a lot of problems, such as give my husband severe, de such as give my husband severe depression. Today, I did deliverance on myself with the help of Isaiah Saldivar's video. I felt the demon through my skin. It was writhing under my hands while I was telling it to go. I said, go, demon. I had to be firm with it. I was very stubborn. Satan himself told it to stay. After demanding it to go, I felt something cough, right? It coughed. <laughs> and then it went still to try and fool me. Right? But God said it was still there, so I carried on. Then I felt a release. I coughed again, and then peace. It left me. I feel amazing. There you go. You see, again, she did it he herself. Helps. Yeah. She worked it out for herself. But Greg Locke is not just inspiring with his words. He's also inspiring with his music. Oh, my God. You think Holden McNeely has bars? People thought that Holden McNeely's rap was the best part of his appearance. Yeah. And I was shocked by that. Because it was my least favorite part. You made him do it. Yes. And I had no plan to do that. <laughs> also, uh, the Rob can attest to that. There was no plan to have him rap. 100% on the fly. It was just trying to get... It was like, it's why I imagine why his parents put a Game Boy in his hands. So he yeah. had something to do. Please shut up. So now, this next <laughs> video we're showing here. So, Greg Locke, he... God, he's good. God is good, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Because what we did not know is that Greg Locke was started off life, I guess, as a child rapper. Yeah, Heaven M. God, I hate that. <laughs> I too hate it. So, but then no, he, Rev Rhymes, Rev Rhymes is his. Hip -hop he did this name. later on. So this was a video from ten years ago. So for a while, I guess he tried to revamp his child rapping ways, and then he made a new song. He made this rap called "Victims of the Traffic." By Rev Rhymes. Um, only 15,000 views, which I'm kind of surprised by. But here, here's a little chunk, just so you know, because you know we like to keep it real here at the Breakfast Club. <laughs> <laughs> Five fingers of death. There are more people in the bondage of slavery today than at any other time in the history of the world. 40% mm -hmm. of all of our missing children in America are caught in sex trafficking rings. Yep. The I'm average terrified. individual that is trafficked is sold for $90. It's a discount. 75% yeah, of them are sold by sale. someone Ooh. that they know very well. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Dude, There's you know he's bad ass. ass shoes. Dude. Standing in a fucking puddle. He don't give a yeah, shit. His shoes are wet and fuck. There's an evil in these streets, but people, they keep walking. The government is hush-hush and preachers ain't talking. Everybody's quiet as a mouse. 
Cause you don't get concerned unless it happens in your house. Oh, I see shit. it on the news. Nothing all the time. says Nashville like so a white man. So I'm working, I keep rapping. silent, so I'm busting out this rhyme. <laughs> it's time to lift the lid on a subject that ain't nice. Lid. They snatching up our kids, selling them out like they merchandise. Lid. We've overlooked it like a big misplacement. Not thinking about the girls beat up naked in a basement. What? Uh, there's no <laughs> hope for victims, only danger. Forced all the time having sex with a stranger. I know that sounds so dirty. You'd rather turn your face, but you can't sit there silent and still preach about his grace. It's gonna take I don't an think army paid for to stand against this wrong. No. It's become an epidemic that's now 30 million strong. My friend, this ain't no game. Don't act like you can pause it. Imagine it's your kid in some dirty dude's closet. Uh, I'm not apologizing for being too I don't crafty. Like you it's time to break the no. silence for the victims of the traffic. Oh, shit! Damn! <laughs> Did we add that? Oh yeah, good work. No, Rob. but it does end with a giant explosion. It does. It, uh, it does. <laughs> so if you guys were worried about the overwhelming power of Greg Glock and worrying about what he was going to do, like I would be, yeah, because that type of rhymes. That's what connects to the Zoomers. The Zoomers, I've heard, they like pizza parties. They mm -hmm. like rap music. They like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A lot of the Zoomers, they're really into Pez. Fidget spinners. As long as you really center that, yeah. Greg Locke, he's coming for our kids. And we got to be careful because those types of filthy ass fucking honky licks are the shit that fucking gets people radicalized. Amen to that. Yeah, so we got to be careful, man. Um, speaking of fun priests and uh, preachers. Oh, so we're done with, yeah, I think we're done with the updates. If you have anybody has any other Greg Locke information. I want to know. Side stories, LPOTL at gmail.com. I... I don't like him. I don't like him, but I'm kind of obsessed with him. All yes, of a you have become obsessed, but that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good yeah. for the show. Um, all right, so check this out. This is from the motherland. Um, a Polish priest. Oh, budgie, budgie. Bushy, bushy, oh, tiny bushy. You give me, you give me, you give me a kiss. You make a soup from a pair of feet. Um, a Polish priest um, is in jail after a man collapsed after having too many erectile drugs at the cleric's sex party. Holy shit. It sounds like it's Father Diddy. Yeah. Got him! <laughs> oh! So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so the, apparently this Polish priest has an orgy at his own home. That's awesome. And then he was pumping this dude full of erectile dysfunction drugs. Look at the smile on his face. He looks like he's sitting on one right now. His name is Gorsagors Karczak. <laughs> Karczak. <laughs> Bishop of the Diocese of Susnowski. Yeah. Stepped down in 2023 following the scandal. The scandal. Dude, I don't know why it's a scandal. If everybody's an adult and they're just straight fucking, that's like normal almost. I think... If you need more than one Viagra, maybe don't go to a sex party. Dude, how many Viagras would you... Because you dabbled. I, a long time ago, I mean, you would eat like a quarter. But you dabbled... But, you but I'm also a, a normal man. Yeah, and you like did the horny goat weed stuff. You do the stuff I, behind I the tried counter. I tried Like, when I was like 20, I tried the gas station shit. Yeah. And that just made... I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah, sure. It's not yeah, good yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you ever pop a Viagra? I've never taken a Viagra. Never taken... I've taken half of one a long time ago. Does it make you hard instantly? Or is it one of those things that when I mean, you are having Viagra... It takes like 20-something minutes. But is it then... Are you just then hard until you come? Or can you choose... I mean, you stay hard after you come, and then you you're ready to go again, and then it takes longer to come. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. then, but does it just be it's just hard, and you're like, hopefully somebody's here for me. Stick this in. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, hopefully you have a plan when you take it. Yeah. You hopefully can't you're not just, just willy nilly popping it. Sometimes I'm like, I was thinking about just taking one, going to a movie. I remember one of the funniest things I ever saw was uh, some kid in my high school took half of one right before football practice. <laughs> <laughs> his dick was just like pressed against the cup the whole time. <sighs> He's complaining about it. Yeah, I feel like that's I feel like it's something that's not good. What is that? What do you look at? You're looking at the up though. I'm seeing Rob pulled up a bunch of over the counter dick. I'm pills. sure whatever it's been I a while, took man. is you know is uh, illegal now. Oh yes, because usually they, they can sell anything, and then the FDA gets to it, and then they got to change it uh, one uh, uh, ingredient or something. Now this priest who is referred to the guy that was his Tomas Z. Right now, if yeah. you sell Viagra illegally, obviously there is a, you know, they, do we know what's Viagra or is this, could this just be it horny said, goat weed? It, it's just, he said uh, erectile drugs. So we don't know that it's actually. That's called for, Pfizer trying to cover up their fucking 
the pads. Do dude. the what is what is a Polish Viagra? <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of it. Yeah, it's like well, a stick up your asshole. <laughs> Go big boy nine. It's a pierogi. Wow, look at this. Oh, big it's boy. a walrus. It is fun. It's called male enhancement. Big boy nine times. It's got a walrus on it. It says time size stamina. No headache. Fifty five dollars. If it. If you have to advertise no headache, it means it gives you a headache. Well, just the idea of like, I don't know if Natalie would it's appreciate like, me becoming a heaving ooh, walrus. King Kong here. King I, Kong. I, just even this idea of, I, I think that some women might be fine with the idea of a silverback gorilla pumping away at them. No. I think for the most part, most women would say, I, I prefer uh, the genteelness would, of a man. Yeah, please. I think Julie's favorite part is when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that it even happened in the first place. I think that's important. It's about the journey. Explain <laughs> it to her the next time. It's just an extremely short journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this priest has to pay uh, the victim 15,000 zlotys, which is Polish money. Yeah. Yeah, but it would, it, which translates to 3,000 euros Whoa. in damages for uh, for having to go to the hospital. Well, I guess he, I, he could have, you know, I feel like this is one of those things, too, mm -hmm. where, like, if it's just adults having an orgy... And they have to figure out how to get their jollies out. This could have been done under the table. He could have paid this guy off to the sign. Oh if you're really going to be, if you're just, ha if there's no kids here, I don't blame them at all. It really seems like it's a victimless crime. Well, yeah, if it's everybody, well, that guy passed out because he was gave him a bunch of erectile pills, but it sounds but like he might asking. have taken them himself for all we know. But also, he just threw the party. Wasn't he just asking for the erectile pills? Was he say, more, more. Me yeah. need, me stem needs machu, more crush. Machu, machu, machu. Eat, eat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I need more for my taste to cross. I need to have my penis be punched. You know, and then you're like, all right, Grigor. You know what I mean? Like, they gave it, just could give him whatever he wants, because if not, he's going to drink all the potato-based vodka. Yeah. And then um, the bishop stepped down also. Oh, yeah, because it sounds like he was there, but he was- Seems looking... like he was there, but yeah, Good they gave him. no reason for his re Again, resignation. He has the smile on his face like he's watching his wife getting eat out by another man. Yeah. Well, does he doesn't have a wife. He's a priest. That's what's awesome about being a priest. Yeah. Every woman in your congregation's her wife. Yeah, they don't mention if it was all men or, you know, they just say it was an orgy. I think it might be dude-based. I think so, too. I think it might be some of the- I do feel like in Europe, because you remember with Berlusconi- yeah. They didn't even the mind bunga the bunga, bunga parties. Bar I think in, in Italy, they didn't even really care about the bunga bunga parties. He got, he's, no, they cared. But I thought they said that they liked that about him. I thought they were like, hey, that's a my spaghetti president. I think some oh, people were like that. He like a make a peach. <laughs> oh, you was, know how that nono comes. He makes a gnocchi on a butter. He was removed from office. Yes. <laughs> but I thought that was like for financial reasons. I thought it was way more for other problems. I thought the Bunga Bunga Party, they all kind of understood. I thought the Bunga Bunga Parties was a thing that was happening across the boot. Yeah, I think so as well. I don't know. But we don't know for sure. I don't know for certain. Don't know for sure. But I we just, do know that this Polish priest was <laughs> throwing... Rectum parties in the rectory. I think it should be, if everyone's a consenting adult, I think it should be allowed and celebrated in a European fashion, which is having a cigarette for yeah. breakfast. Have you ever seen like a priest uh, domicile, like where they live? It's like dorms kind of? Yeah, it's of. horrible. Yeah, and it's basically, they just have a bed and a dresser. Yeah, all it is is a secret keeping closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, I imagine it's good for sex. You really, th I mean... It's just the bed. What else are they going to do in the room? I have a light nun thing, obviously. Yeah, like you're I'd into have it? But more so, I just want... Too baggy. Yeah, but you know, I like it none of there. Yeah. But the idea of being horny in a rectory... Like, look at this man. Look at this pedophile. Yeah. This is a man who's sitting here, priests and nuns. He's sitting on his little cot. He's got his little thing. I hate this man. I look at him. He's got a little checkerboard little thing. He's sitting here. I don't like a priest out of costume. Yeah. Don't lie to me. It's like a police officer. I should be able to allow to say, I should be able to say, are you a priest? And then you have to tell me, even though that's also a myth. I also don't want to see your socks. Never. If I see your socks, I know you're a priest. I know you're a fucking priest. <laughs> 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 All right, we got some other stuff here. Yeah. Uh, that's a horrible story. Uh, and I, you no, know, actually, I, I think it's I think it's pure. I feel like this guy was, you know, basically they're just in trouble for the drugs. Yes, and I think if you were in Europe, you should uh, uh, encourage your priest to have sex with adults. All priests should fuck adults. Love that. I think we're on this. I think we can lift the entire idea of celibacy. But I don't know why. I don't know why we're not there yet. Or you know, you could also have women be priests. Blech.
<laughs> You're not going to church. You don't give a shit. <laughs> Who cares? It's not having ladies in there. <laughs> Honestly, I think women, there are some women priests. Not Catholic. I thought not that they allowed. won some. I thought there was no, like. No, there's like, there's like, you know, Baptists and shit like that. But yeah. Catholicism doesn't allow. That's why they're all nuns. I know. And, it's, and then they, they surprise why they attract a bunch of weirdos. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm-hmm. And now there's no nuns. They're losing nuns. Nuns no one's fun. signing up. To, we're going to see the end of nuns in our lifetime. I hope that we do. Yeah. I'd love to see the end of nuns. I just like nuns. What's the point of doing it? What you do you don't mean? even get to preach. Yeah, you get nothing out of it. There's no you like. You get nothing out of you it. You get nothing out of it. You just have to like mop the floors all day. Well, it does help if you're just kind of. I feel like if you're a, a strange person, and I think that it's good for you to have a kind of structured environment for you to go be in. I think that anybody that chooses chooses that type of like truly restrictive monastic experience is probably, on the whole, deeply unsatisfied with life or themselves or something yeah. else going on, looking for purpose. I do think that some people do believe in the higher calling aspect, but then they're trapped inside of an extremely corrupt system, uh, and then they go there. And I just think a lot of nuns are just fucking. He's mean. Oh, I, I know that for a fact. And I am famous for a line where I said all nuns are lesbians, but I actually think that some of them are also pedophiles. There you go. Isn't that fun? There you go. Isn't I got hit by a nun. nun. Sister oh, yeah. Dolores. She's fucking dead. All right, here we go. We got another great story. Now, this is, I thought this story was fascinating and it's very, very interesting because we covered a little bit with Natalia Grace and we talked about how the government it's wild that the government almost has magical properties over our I- identities and how if the government decides, like Natalia Grace, the government just decided she was 22 and then it's done. It has now happened. Legally, magically, she is transformed from a little girl to a 22 years old person. And it's, but it's interesting, but it's also, it works with identities. You can squat on an identity like you would squat on a piece of property. Oh, I love this story. And you could, Scott, like, they, there's a way to do this. And this is an example of, like, how the legal loopholes that go around the esoteric nature of literally our names and identities, like, how they can make decisions that, like, affect who you are as a human being. And because it's on a piece of paper, it has now become, like, real. Yeah. It's very interesting. This is probably the most extreme case of identity theft I've ever heard. Of. Well, it's also because of the it's it's kind of like a ramp up and it's like nothing fully like how do you put it? Over the top bad happened until the very end. And then it just started spiraling. So this was a high level Iowa hospital systems administrator by the name of Matthew Kierens was admitted to stealing a coworker's identity and posing imposing as William Donald Woods for more than 30 years. Yeah, and he was able to get away with it because William Donald Woods um, became homeless. No, this is, it's wild. So, so just, here we go, remember this. So, Matthew Kierens is the guy that is now being convicted, who's now being prosecuted for identity theft. Yeah. The man whose identity he stole was a man by the name of William Donald Woods. Billy Woods. They great met. Hip, great rapper. Great rap name. Great rapper. Great rap name. They met while well, they were working at a hot dog stand. Now, this happened, it was about 1988. They worked together at a hot dog stand in New Mexico. From then on. No way it was good. <laughs> what are you talking about? Street meat? Albuquerque street meat? <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> um, but William, this guy, Kieran's is going to face, he could face up to 32 years in prison for this, and he must pay a $1.25 million fine. So he worked with this guy, worked with William, the, w- Billy Woods, at a hot dog stand. And then he then would use Billy Woods' name and likeness identity in every single aspect of his life in every way yeah. since 1988 until now employment insurance he got a social security number a driver's license titles loans credit basically what found out is that william donald woods didn't know that someone stole his identity until he was already on the street and then he found out by like you know because a lot of homeless guys still like will have bank accounts but like these yeah. guys are like they, they still have a life they, they're still a human being and so he went in and he found out that he was in $150,000 in debt and he's like I have a grocery card there is no way I'm $150,000 I would have seen some of that cash 
Yeah. And so, yeah, $130,000, but not that that matters. And when you're, you know, $100 is, you know, $1,000 at that point. It started in 1990, where the Kierens was working at a newspaper carrier for the, as a working as a newspaper carrier for the Denver Post. And that's when he first got an ID in Woods' name. The next year, Kieran's bought a vehicle for six hundred dollars. Remember back in the day? Oh my God! You remember? Man, I sold a car for seventy five one time. Yeah, yeah. Woo. The Tempo. Wow. wow. Oh yeah. yeah, the one that was stuck in the in Holden's parking lot for, yeah, for yeah, a few months, yeah. where it was like the last time you parked it, and you're like, now it lives here. Yeah. <laughs> Lost a lot of good t shirts in that. Yep. And so he came forward. So that happened, and he basically he realized he bought this car, and then. His checks bounced. So Kieran's was already being shady. The checks bounced. He then took that stolen vehicle. He stole a video that he bought, that he basically ran with after his checks bounced. Yeah. And then the car broke down and he abandoned it. And there was immediately an arrest warrant in Woods's name. So this immediately happened. He immediately made Woods a criminal by leaving this thing behind. It, it was crazy. And then he started, he then got a job together. He created a fake resume. This is the power of a fake resume. Yes. I'm, I'm actually going to say this as advice. Lie more. You think on so? your resume. I because hate fake it till you make it. The problem is, is that's that how fucking the wrong foot gets cut off. As long as it's not in a hospital at the insurance company. Like, think about where you're going. If you're going to go work for a graphic designer, you can lie. You think if so? you're going to go work for me. If company, I got a shitty graphic back, I'd be bad. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You don't find out until you get that first paycheck and then you go. You mm-hmm. run away. The key is how long can you keep the grift going? But then the grift slowly but surely turns into a job. If you can swing it, you just have to be good. The first couple of weeks is super crucial. Yeah, and then you go up to your your coworker. I'm like, hey, how'd yeah, you do that? How you do that? Yeah, and then <laughs> something happens. But just if it's not like not what this guy did. So he got he managed to fraudulently this Kieran's managed to fraudulently fraudulently obtain Woods's birth certificate. What you can do um, by having now set up a bunch of various things because he got some car loans. He got some stuff. He then got a job faking an entire resume um, as a high level administrator in the hospital's information technology department. This is for the Iowa City Hospital. Uh, Over the next decade, he would earn 700 grand in that role as a legit just guy working at the in the IT department while the actual woods. Is homeless. He is homeless. Kieran's, he uses his Woods name, Social Security, date of birth. He got eight vehicle and personal loans from two different credit unions. Uh, and then he just realized, showed up one day that he, like, so he, so now the real Woods gets this notice that he's 130K in debt. Yeah. He then goes like, well, this isn't me. He's and like, here's my Social Security card. Here's my California ID card. And essentially they're like, well, this other guy was already you first. So that guy's you. Well, and he went to the bank, and then he presented all this, and he's like, listen, this ain't me. And then the bank called up Kieran's, and then asked Kieran's- him the security questions. Yes. And, secu- and then, of course, he answered them, right? he knew he created all the security questions. And they fucking put Woods in jail. Yeah, dude. For p- being himself. And so- they- 428 days. Yes, he went into prison. The dude fucking, like- this is crazy what you as long as you have no conscience, there's so many things that you can get away with. Because he did it first. He got Woods detained in a publicly funded California mental hospital because he said, This guy's harassing me. Yeah. I'm obviously Billy Woods. This guy is faking it. Blah blah blah. And then finally, finally, this guy's in jail. Someone finally listens to this guy. He gets out. He's back to being homeless. LAPD again. failed. Who comes in? Iowa. But Iowa had to go. So this guy. Private investigator. A private investigator gets involved. Eventually somebody's like, we got to look into this. And this private investigator tests the original Woods' DNA Mm -hmm. against his father's DNA. And they got the actual evidence of this is this man. Yeah. It is wild. Also, Kieran's fucked up because he used a different middle name a couple times for some reason. But if you start all of the accounts, it is so difficult for all of that to get unwrapped. Because when after Woods, the original Woods, got out of jail for being himself, like fifteen months or so, he was told your name is your name is now Michael. Your name is now Matthew Kieran's. You are this guy. You are not you. And it was for a while, and it finally all got unpacked. And so now. 
He's in jail. They got the right guy in jail. Matthew Matthew Kieran's is in jail, and he has to pay everybody all the fucking money that. But he he doesn't have it. He's a fucking crook. And that's the key to being a crook of how, in the very end, how you get away altogether is by then claiming like you don't have the money, like a certain president we used to have, (laughs) where you just go and you say you don't have this money, and then you're like, "Can you squeeze blood from a stone, sir?" You have to like do that shit. Man, I feel so bad for the, uh, the real Woods, man. That's crazy. I hope someone takes care of him. But it's nice is that the when the the detective cornered Kieran's, the first thing that Kieran said, the 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 guy who stole the identity was, my life is over. Everything is gone. Yeah, no, no. He had nothing. He, he knew he was fucking done. Yeah, man. He's a piece of shit. Man, he, I will say, that's a wide neck. He's got oh, a, yeah. he's a big man with a big head. And somehow that neck. It's wider than his head. I think he that, looks like he could swallow his own head. He has, I, to be frank, he looks like a thin head. Yeah, he has a very thin head. It is he is a thumb based person. Yeah, that, he's a that is a thumb man, um, and he's going to do well in jail. Oh, I think. yeah, I think he's going to do very very well in jail. Yeah, I th- he'll he'll go in under the name uh, Adolf Hitler. Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> or do we have what's next? We're what's next. Uh, we got a lot of stuff. Like, there is a lot of stuff. We got the the vaginal weightlifter. Well, the thing about the vaginal weightlifters. <laughs> Jesus Christ! When you're ta- please, not when you're talking about the vaginal weightlifter. Right. God damn it! A Henry. bunch of stuff came up. Yeah. Now I there's a story. It's an old story. Unfortunately, this got sent. Not that old. Two years. It's more just I discovering the concept of vaginal weightlifting. I didn't I didn't know anything about this till today. I had seen it on the internet, but I did not know. Like I had heard of vaginal weightlifting, but I did not really know like what it entailed. And this is a story that came from 2 years ago. Yeah. So like can I is it like does she have like two like do you see the picture? Like clips do you not her, see the picture? I see the picture, but I'm so trying the way to figure, describe is there, is it. Is, is, there, that, is it her lips? Well, you're looking at here. Or so, is there like a rod in her and she's squeezing it with her muscles? We're going to put this in social media. Can you please, if you see here, you notice how she has an item hanging oh, out of her. Of fame. She has an idol, uh, She has an item hanging out of her choochie like she is a grandfather clock, right? Yeah. What she is doing right there. But it's right like there, swinging from a rope. What that is, is a yoni egg, which is what Gwyneth Paltrow uses. It is clenched. Inside of her vaginal muscles. So with this her vaginal isn't like, muscles. see, I was picturing like jumper cables hooked up to her lips and then she was just like stretching them out with a bowling ball. <laughs> no. No. no, 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 no. What they do is they grip it. You see, she grips it with her vagina muscles. And it seems that, and so this was the story where this came from a woman by the name of Kimberly Howerlack. I believe that's how you pronounce it, that um, she was 50. She runs she 50, uh, 50. She runs intimacy retreats um, and she can lift with her privates. She's a, she attacked a census worker. This woman came in. She was a six year old woman and she attacked her. Here's a photo of the you know what I covered. This is where I recognize this woman. I showed this video on the stream once. This oh, is a did? video of her. um Carrying her own surfboard with her pussy to the beach. Um, you have this other one where she's carrying a bunch of lemons. Um, good for her. But what we have more so is then I got lemons it's a lot easier than a surfboard. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. One's a warm up. So I got I started looking and so could we look? I was like, I saw that the story was old, and I was like, well, you know, this is not the same. But then all of a sudden I found that and I looked up vaginal weightlifting, and mm. then that took me to a term called vaginal kung fu. Oh. Which has come up quite a bit. Now, I've noticed that it's, uh, it's a, it is good. apparently got nothing to do with fighting. It's got all to do with lifting things with your vagina. Kung fu. And, yes. But I am also really afraid of how strong these vaginas are and will it hurt my, the penis. Yeah, I don't see, need a vagina right that can lift a surfboard. This is a diagram. You see how it has a little weight with the line going all the way up inside of her vagina. Okay. What she does is that she shoves the anchor point all the way up into the top, and then the weight dangles from the rope as it goes all the way out. Now, this is and a why does of, it fall out of her? Because she's gripping. So she's her vaginal wall muscles are very strong. Yeah, buddy. She, according to this, would you have to do? Um, I'm here to infuse more passion into your life in bed. 
Um, this woman's horny as all get out. The woman yeah. that runs this, a woman runs. I, I mean, you have a, to be to figure out you can do this. I found another a woman that Some runs dude dangling from the bottom of her. Like, let me out, let me out. She's like, yeah, we're going to the police. It's intense. But I found another vaginal kung fu master by the name of Kim Anami. Okay. And she, yeah, it's super, yeah. You could tell I spent nearly a decade living off grid from pirate boats off the coast of Vancouver to the wet, sultry jungles of Indonesia. It was there, caressed by the warm air, like an omnipresent lover, that I shed my pseudo self and came into my life purpose. I gave myself a new name, Anami, Sanskrit for the unnameable one, the highest plane of God. In endlessness, I found my identity. It also symbolizes to me the idea that there's always another level to go to. Wow. And she puts weights in her vagina. Now, as you can see, she's holding that five pound weight with her vagina. And is that incredible? But she yeah. also wrote a musical. So this is a clip of the musical that Kim and Ami wrote that is a celebration of all the powers of your vagina. And I think it's important because is Women's Month over? Yeah. A sad. Yeah. I'm angry that, about that. I think it should be Women's Year. You're welcome. Well, oh, she was, um, she assaulted this woman on, uh, on the coming parade, whatever that means. I think it's something Australian. Let's take a look at this, this song. Oh, the volume's down. Bunch of ladies laying in the grass. Touching each other's breasts. Orgasmatopia. Doesn't it sound like it, the way Eddie says it? Orgasm hits her like a train up a train. Oh, she's a breathe singer. Mm. <laughs> Coming on. Ooh. Opening it's, it's up. Whenever I see a papaya, I'm just yeah, like, let me screw it. <laughs> Don't fuck a fruit. No more hiding under covers after a few pumps in bed. Sounds like Florence in the Machine. She did it with every lifting of her yoni egg. See the. Oh, there's the egg. Like that's the egg. I think it's actually a parody. There's a rock. There's a rock. The oh, this is not a parody, buddy. Kim and Ami. This is this is Florence and the Machine. She's par I think she's a par she's she is re oh. the lip. The so she's like a weird owl. That's what it is. It is the yeah. long days are over. She's yes. covering Florence and the Machine. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. So you were right, it does that's how little we know about Florence and the Machine. Florence. The numb days are over. It's because I'm certain all. I'm certain that it works. I actually don't know. I'd love to know. Side stories lpotl at gmail.com. I've seen the jade egg. I don't talked about the jade egg. Kink shame, but no, it's not. This is not kink. This is vaginal strength, friend. One of these women are going to be president. One of these women is going to be a judge on a circuit court. Yeah, because she's looking at her vagina in the mirror. I think it's nice. It's a prison move. I don't look at my butthole in a mirror, but that's just because I'm saving myself. But um, we can stop this now. We can stop this in madness. And then the, uh, but side stories, LPOTL at gmail.com. Do you lift weights with your vagina? I would love to know. And I'd also love to know if you've used the Yoni egg, what's it like? Yeah. Is it hurt? I, I heard that she tied the 60 year old woman to her Yoni egg and dragged her down the street like a fucking rag doll. That would be incredible. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> just film it, <laughs> film it, show the rest of us. <laughs> All right. I think we're at listener letters time. We're at listener letters time, but we have some more stories. I feel like that we should save for next week. We have a lot of stuff. There's some good shit in here. We didn't get to. Oh yes. There's a quite a bit of stuff. We yeah. have that. We have the, some the guy drug who, made out of ground up human corpses. Yeah. And we've got that. The, the, wi the, the, the judge's wife who shot the nephew. For staying too long, which yeah. is incredible. It's a great story because, again, I their guests are horrible. Yeah. I hate having, even though I like that I can, I hate every second of it. Mm -hmm. I love saying you can stay at my house. I absolutely utter hate, utterly hate the reality of it. Yeah. So I could see where the woman's coming from by shooting the guy. Yeah. Also, yeah, you gotta if you're staying at someone's house, you gotta pick up your shit. 
you know, you got to bring groceries. You got to do some stuff. Bring a gift. People just show up and like expect to be waited on bring hand and foot. Bring something to the house. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And pick up your trash. Yes. I, I remember one time I had someone stay over my house and I watched them blow their nose and threw the tissue on the counter. Infuriating. Lose my mind. Infuriating. All right. Well, let's get some more emails. I'm a 9-11 dispatcher. <laughs> I'm a 911 dispatcher for yeah. a county in New Jersey. It's a difference. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a vulture story. About a year ago, we started getting 911 calls from motorists passing by a house in one of the towns we dispatch for. The callers were reporting hundreds of vultures on the property, all over the house, yard, and circling above. People were asking for the police to do welfare checks because someone had to be dead in the house or somewhere on the property. After numerous responses, an officer finally told us there's no problem at the house. The man that lives there just likes the company of vultures more than people. So he goes out to collect roadkill and brings it back home to his flock of vultures. We now have a he's note a for the address. He, we do, he is, he's a chef. Yeah. We now have a note for the address to not send police for reports of vultures anymore. So they are nature's garbage collectors and they are everywhere and apparently better company than humans. Wow. So hide bodies at this guy's house. Oh, yeah. Cops ain't lo- coming. Can you imagine loving vultures? Because don't they all like reek of carry on as well? They, they're they ugly to look at. But, yes. But if you're buddies with them, you know, I, I'm friends with ugly people. Yeah, hey, hey, most of my friends are gross. Yeah. Now, we also uh, got great responses about the brown note, the brown sound. Or are uh, you going to skip that you don't know shit about juice? I'm going to save that for the stream. <laughs> I'm going to save it for the stream. <laughs> uh, there is boiling in juice. No, there isn't. There is? No, there isn't. It is in there. There is heating to 195 degrees, which is not a boiling I'm boil. saving it for the stream. Okay. <laughs> That's where choose conversations are. Choose conversations aren't here. Drunk yes. uh, Make a lot God of damn. separate notes about the brown note. <laughs> about the idea of a frequency weapon that can be used to make you shit your pants. And I got it's all over the responses I got were all over the place. Like one is like saying the brown note definitely doesn't exist. That some people are saying it might have been debunked. There's some people saying that more so is that this type of directional energy weapon that's like a sound based weapon would actually be difficult to direct. That it would be it would have to be done very short in a in a short span, like yeah. in a very close area. You would almost have to like resign yourself to being a victim of it a little in bit. order to use it. But the biggest response I got back was the concept of what if our soldiers don't particularly care if they shit their pants. We had this guy basically said, when it comes to uh, large full-scale warf- warfare, this is from a uh, one of our one of our boys overseas, right? Mm-hmm. There's apparently is a lot of shit in the military. Um, yeah, it's an army's worth of shit. Yes, I know that there are diapers, because I did bring up the idea about tactical diapers last week as well. There are diapers, but they're not for pooping in. It's to save your dick and balls from IEDs. So they just they do wear them sometimes. It's if they're more on of a that. chastity belt. Yeah, it's a, they wear that when they're on the patrol, when they're trying to go look for IEDs. So or, they don't have to sit on their helmets anymore. Yes. Yes. So they basically have new armored underwear, and it's apparently extremely uncomfortable. Um, I'd still wear it. So here it goes. So I can... <laughs> Yes, it helps. So, the American spirit of the modern day infantrymen would render a brown note weapon system completely useless. The following is good news that should inspire rather than concern. I can tell you right up front no research, no studies, just pure exposure to boots on the ground infantrymen. They don't care if they shit their pants. A huge percentage of them have already shit their whole ass at the bar home, strip clubs, restaurants, or even in training. Poop humor is a massive part of army culture, and a successful BNWS attack on troops would only solidify camaraderie and boost morale. Infantry soldiers are often young, polite, maybe even maybe even meek or physically uninspiring, but similar to a colony of la- uh, but similar to a colony of ants, they become one large organism of sheer intensity and blind operation. Already fueled by monster energy drinks, a mental spank bank of dancing TikTok girls, fear of getting in trouble by superiors, and the constant pursuit of battlefield glory, a coordinated BNWS attack would only light a fuse of inspiration that would detonate a bomb of self-defecated, organized, and weaponized horde of young men 
who simply don't give a fuck. Our enemies know this. I would say few are as resilient in a pair of poop pants than the American infantrymen. And for this reason, and many more, Americans can peacefully sleep at night knowing that young men and women, diaperless, are selflessly prepared to answer nature's call and the call of duty. Man, that guy... This is well written. I love this letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My country tis full of peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I know football players piss themselves all the time. Yeah, but that's for fun. Yeah, but in the game, because you can't really go to the bathroom. Yeah, you just got to piss. And if you got to go, you got to go. I've heard that. Yeah. So... Let's do it. That's also what my father, my grandfather said right before he died. <laughs> Let's rock. Man. No, if you got to go, you got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess this is the. <laughs> I think that's it for. Should we just do that for now? I feel like that's it. I mean, someone else tasted their cousin's ashes. I think I might send that. Maybe send that for next week or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's fine with me. I don't care about talking about it. It's just nice to be here with you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Around this time last year, I'll read this letter. Oh, I got big news for you. What? Your girl's getting a divorce. My wife? <laughs> yes. Guess no. What? <laughs> yeah, she the- told you first. Yes, the papers are here <laughs> oh, again. Oh, fuck. Yes. I told you you shouldn't be serving these. <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard filed for divorce from husband Ryan <laughs> Anderson <girl. laughs> three months after prison <laughs> release. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, I think the pressure was a lot for her. I think she might have been groomed by a man outside of jail uh, for sexual congress outside of jail. Maybe it's because he dyed his hair. I think the, the bleach blonde hair is not a good look. Um, yeah, he she, looks like Andrew Poonanen. Yeah, TMZ uh, la- coming in last minute, man, with yeah. this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard is making the split from her husband, Ryan Anderson, official as she just filed for divorce. Yeah, she says that it was a lot. I think it was a lot for her all at once. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it was a lot for her. Hopefully she, I mean, or, or she's anti-fat. Because that's a big husband. She's out of prison. She's got some fame. She's like, I got to ditch the fatty. She's already trained. Yeah, I think she's getting too big for her britches. I have a. a He's lucky she didn't kill him. Yes. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) You know who I think needs to get in there? Who? A fun old school guy like Simon Rex. Simon Rex? Brian Austin Green. Yeah. She needs a taste of his annual. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Simon Rex got the red rocket. Yeah. And ex fiance got matching tattoos following separation with <gasps> husband. Oh, oh, she went back to the wow. ex. She went back to the guy that killed her mother. A different ex that she met while she was in prison. God bless her. Wow, she's busy. Ken Urker. Awful. Awful bad name. name. Yeah, bad, yeah, bad yeah. Name. You know, they met up in needs- New Orleans for dinner. Tattoos and sightseeing. I think that she just needs some time away from this. I think I hope that she takes some time away Dude, from this, this fucking poor fat man. He went out, his whole family was just like, do not marry this woman. I legitimately, and he's like, I'm in love with her. I know for a fact that next week we're going to get a message about how he's a fucking psychopath. I think that I he's mean, there's not no a way nice he's guy. normal. And this guy's old. The new guy's old. So this guy's also a manipulator. I think that she just needs to be go away. He looks like Joe Gatto from the Impractical Jokers. Who, the new guy? The new guy, yes. Oh, okay. I, uh, this is not good. It's not good. I, well, I just think, I just wish you should take some time, walk away from the spotlight. It's a lot. I think yeah. It's a lot. A poor, yeah. Ryan got super argumentative with her, apparently, is why yeah, she's bet. divorcing him. Yeah, I've, I think that you know, it's different when, you, when you're when you wooing a, uh, a I'm not, I'm not going to say domestic. Also, marriage is hard, Gypsy Rose. Marriage is hard. Sometimes you got to work through it. Sometimes okay. you got to argue. You can't don't argue or crazy. You already killed your mother. Okay? So, you can't get out of every argument that way. But killing everybody. Mm-hmm. All right? So, we'll figure out how this goes. We'll see. <laughs> I think that she's got to, she is cruising for Bruce. So, live every day. Oh, God, you can't marry the first guy you meet when you're out of jail. I think that you got to live every day. She got your married while she was in jail. I know. I think that you should live every day knowing that, you know, there's plenty of fish in the sea, especially once you're out of the fishbowl and back in the water. You know, and you got to love the fact that you get all different types of fish, and it's not just the fish you're used to. You know, it's not just the fish you just were talking to behind a bunch of plate glass. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of new free fish, a bunch of new fun, successful, eyes on the open road fish that are going to maybe help you. You know what I mean? And then you can laugh at that fish. Uh, 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 as long as that fish got money, help you later on in life. 
oh, you know, yeah. and help you kind of get used to a normal life outside of prison because you are probably kind of messed up from that process. Oh, it kind of looks like they're just plugging the Lifetime show. Yeah, yeah. I think that she's yeah, still Yeah, even that. Ryan was like, you know, you can see, I don't want to talk about it, but you can see it all on the Lifetime show. Yeah, he literally did. It was all for the show, yeah. Yeah. So uh, she, she might, I think she needs a break. And I hope that she gets her break. I don't think she's going to, no, considering she's on a Lifetime show. Yes. About this. Yes. And she did, it was yes. all for entertainment. Yes, very much so. I think the divorce was written. It might have been. Yes, it seems that she is doing a form of social media acting out. But that is her liberty. Absolutely. As a free American. Mm -hmm. She's allowed to make a spectacle of herself. Do That's you, the American dream. Do you still, you still love her? I was never attracted to her. I didn't say you're attracted to her. You can love someone you're not attracted to. I'm not talking about sex love. I'm talking about I've love I've never been love. a fan. I love you. I'm not attracted to you. Thank God. I've never been a fan of her, necessarily. Oh, I thought you were. You talk about her so much. And Talia Grace. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a fan of Talia Grace. Technically, yeah. I would say I'm a great I'm I like a her work. head. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd hang out with Talia Grace. For sure. We hang out, smoke some, fucking rip some butts. Hell I'd smoke yeah. cigarettes again and hang out with Talia Grace. That's a, that's a goal. Right? That's <laughs> Get a fresh pack of Camel Lights. <laughs> Talia Grace, big gulp, hanging out. The problem is, she nachos. gets caught with those cigarettes. She's going to have to finish the whole pack. Hey, I, I think she'd like it. <laughs> she's a smoker. I think she's a smoker. Yeah. Well, go check out patreon.com slash last podcast on the left if you want to watch us talk. And you can go to twitch.tv slash LPN TV to watch all our things on Twitch. Yeah. We have other things coming up soon. Side Stories Live. Side Stories Live. May 9th at the Masonic. Part of the Netflix is a joke festival. Come check us 9 out. 9.45 p.m. Yes. Check. We yes. are going to figure out new stuff for the road. Yeah, so, so it's going to be fun. hang out with us. We're going to have a good time. We're going to fucking try some new shit. We're going to have a friend stop by. And, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, and so I'm, I'm super pumped I for can't that. wait. I can't fucking wait. And uh, Truly, what a beautiful space, too. I mean, the Masonic. So much fun. Yeah. And you still can get high in the graveyard right before the show, which is one of my favorites. It's one of the best. Go I see Joey Ramone. Go, you know. Blow leave, smoke in his face, man. Leave a cigarette for Judy Garland. These are things you can do before you come to our show. But then the problem is the birds come and they start smoking. The, the peacocks? Get, yeah, and birds get fucking cancer and it's sad. I don't want to give a bird cancer. And you go to lastpodcastandleft.com for all of the rest of our live show tickets. Go check us out on JK Ultra, our new tour. We are going to various cities in North America and Australia. And Please London. Something. And, and London. Reykjavik. And Reykjavik. Two shows in London, one in Reykjavik. So why don't you get out there and uh, get them tickets, okay? And again, I'm not accepting any more corrections until you send me the correction with the ticket confirmation number in the email. You can correct me on any piece of information, yeah. pronunciation, so, but you have to send me a picture of the ticket you have purchased, and then I will respond. You're just doing this so you can be wrong more. Yeah. And sell tickets. This is great. It's actually a great marketing ploy. Yeah. Because I'm wrong a lot. Hell yeah. Suck it, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Hell Satan. Misinformation's awesome. <laughs> Hell uh who's good today? No one. No one. No one was good today. Hell the uh, Greg Locke's meth dealer. <laughs> what about me? Yeah, Greg, he's busy. Yeah. And think about all the times they had to sit and listen to this fucking guy. It's the only time when the dealer's not the annoying one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Bye for now! <laughs> <laughs>